Hello, YouTube. While I do have some higher end or rarer pens, I do like the mass produced, ostensibly lower end ones a lot, and I tend to use them more often. To make an all mod cons unique pen, just lock up a metal worker in a dungeon with all the equipment and materials, give him a bit of bread and water now and then, let him out in a year or so, and there you have it. But to make a pen that can be produced in vast quantities over many years, with good performance, attractive features, and a sensible price, and still make a profit, now that's much harder. The Noodles Nip Creeper is one of such fountain pens. While it sold like hot cakes when it first came out, these days it tends to fly under the radar somewhat. It got eclipsed by the models that came afterwards. So I think it would be an idea to have a fresh look at it. In fact, I'm not sure if Nip Creeper is official name, as there's another noodles pen, a rollerball, is named as such. But everyone calls it Nip Creeper anyway, so that's how I'm going to call it. The first version, in fact, the first pen by Noodles, came out in 2010 as the Piston Filler. Here is one of the first examples. It is a rather small and lightweight pen, but to my mind, it's not unduly small. If you can write with a pencil or a disposable ballpoint pen, then it's totally acceptable. The nib fitted to it is a regular non-flex nib with a standard feed. And the piston mechanism is of clutchless design. It works just as well as any other, but it's designed to be user serviceable. To take the piston assembly out, first remove the nib and the feed. Screw the piston all the way home, then insert a suitable stick through the front. Well, I have this bit of skewer here, but you can use a cotton butt stick if you have one. Hold it still, and then turn the piston knob. The whole assembly would come out quite easily. So, here you go. Not long afterwards, Noodles fitted its flex nib to it as standard. On the box it says, Standard Flex. Soon afterwards, a new feed was fitted. Comparing the two nibs, you can see the new feed is much bigger with more effective thin buffer for regulating the ink supply, which is helpful to ease out the roller coaster demand for ink when you write with flex. Of course, if you don't apply any conscious effort, it would write normally, giving a fine line. Somewhere along the line, there's a change under the hood, so to speak. A new piston drive assembly was introduced without fanfare with a stronger piston rod and a matching piston knob, and they are not cross-compatible with the old one. So you have an old-style black piston rod that needs replacing, always order a piston knob as well, as the original one won't fit. By the way, on this old-style one, I have replaced the piston with a piston ring that is much more durable. Another attractive point about the pen is that it is able to take a variety of nibs by other manufacturers and it was a popular nib size. This one is fitted with a final release golden star nib for the Model 26 and others and is a superb writer. Also suitable are nibs like this one. Uh, this one is from an Australian Daisy pen, uh, probably made by Bok and it fits rather well. Personally, I like the Nip Creeper. Given a choice between a big pen and a small pen, I would prefer a smaller one. The lightweight is also a very appealing aspect too. For the price, it is worth considering. I'll be back soon again with new videos, and bye for now.